If you did not know, the SolarWinds hack was not one of, but the most sophisticated software supply chain attack to ever occur. SolarWinds hackers enjoyed unfettered access to thousands of SolarWinds customers worldwide for a period of nine months. They could have continued it for even longer if not for the unforced error on their part where they tried to breach the cybersecurity firm FireEye. A Swiss cybersecurity firm says it was able to access servers used by a hacking group named Silverfish tied to the SolarWinds breach. Revealing details about who the attackers targeted and how they carried out their operation. The company known as Proactive Defense Against Future Threats or ProDeft also made some startling revelations about the hackers including the news that they have continued with their campaign even through March 2021. This is a story of hackers getting hacked themselves, karma coming full circle or something taken out of a Hollywood movie. So in this video, I want to discuss some key takeaways from ProDef's research report on SolarWinds hackers and share some of the juicy details they uncovered on one of the world's most notorious cyber criminal organizations in history. As always, all relevant web links are in the description. Let's talk. Hi, my name is Afak. Hope you are doing good. Hope your organization was not breached as part of the SolarWinds hacking campaign. If it did, be sure to check out my SolarWinds Orion Alternatives video. Now, ProDev researchers said they were able to break into the hackers' computers and go through evidence of a massive campaign between August and March. The aim of the hacking group described as Silverfish by the researchers was to spy on victims and exfiltrate data. Now here are the top five takeaways that I came away with. Number one, the scope of the attack. We learned from the disclosures made at the time of the hack in mid-December 2020 that 18,000 SolarWinds customers downloaded the Trojanized SolarWinds Orion software update. There has been plenty of hand-waving. Like someone said, 250 organizations have been breached. White House said 100 but no specific number has been shared by anyone as to how many customers were hacked. But this report puts out a very specific number on the actual customers that were backdoored and that was 4,720. As per SolarWinds, the Orion install base includes 300,000 total customers worldwide. So if the 4,720 number is to be believed, we're talking about only 1.5% of the total install base, which makes it an extremely targeted hack. Just to be clear, the report does not say what portion of 4,720 were hacked. Number two, the target regions or geographies. The only thing we know as far as geographies are concerned is the distribution of the SolarWinds install base. ProDeft says that about half of the targets or 2465, if my mass is right, were located in the US. Another one third were located in Europe. Approximately half of the victims were corporations that have a market capitalization of more than 100 million US dollar. It seems over 90% of the organizations targeted were small to medium cap public companies with yearly revenues less than 10 billion dollar. They also claim that nearly all critical infrastructures as defined in the NIST cybersecurity framework have been successfully compromised. Another interesting data point that I found buried inside the report was a list of banned countries. The banned list consists of 12 countries that were part of the former USSR. So we're talking about countries like Armenia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Russia, Ukraine, and so on. Just to be clear, hackers were actively filtering out victims located in these 12 countries. Number three, using enterprise victims as a real life sandbox. The hackers were using malware detection sandbox formed by actual enterprise victims, which enabled them to test their malicious payloads on actual live victim servers with different enterprise AV and EDR solutions, perhaps to guarantee a high success rate for a quote-unquote 
non-sandbox or live servers. The attackers were using a web panel to periodically test their malicious payloads on more than 6,000 victim devices, scripts, and implants. Number four, the details about the hackers. Prodev found out that hackers consisted of multiple teams working together as part of the campaign. They executed commands and especially crafted scripts used by the APT group strongly indicate sophistication and an advanced post-exploitation skill set. Another interesting finding was the level of hierarchy found on the CNC server, perhaps to enable management of different targets, assignments of these targets to different groups and, and, tri and triaging incoming victims to appropriate APT group members. They also found information that suggested that hackers were mostly working Monday to Friday between the hours of 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. UTC time zone. If you work as a cybersecurity professional, be sure to share this with your boss when he wants you to be on that 1 a.m. call next time. Just kidding. But more on that later though. Number five, the phases of the hacking campaign. It appears that the APT group carried out their hacking campaign in three waves. During the first wave, threat actors mostly infected enterprise companies and government entities in the US. The second wave of attacks was carried out during the late part of October 2020, followed by the third wave around mid-January 2021. Prodev's findings show a totally quiet period starting in early November 2020 and lasting until a month after the SolarWinds hack was publicly disclosed. So we're talking about in total of about two and a half months. As per ProDeft, the hacking activity and data exfiltration are expected to continue throughout this year. And that's some shocking news. Now, here are my final thoughts. Number one, there is plenty of technical details in the report that I did not cover. But I strongly believe that this behind enemy lines sort of discovery will become an important benchmark in terms of understanding the capabilities of the APT actors their ROE and TTPs. There is also a private version of this report exclusively shared with cybercrime organizations. Number two, one of the most striking things from this report is the level of organization and work ethics displayed by the threat actors. They were highly skilled, well-funded, and had a clearly defined mission. This ups the ante on the cybersecurity professionals and the entire ecosystem dedicated to protecting and safeguarding the critical infrastructures. While we have yet to see what the ultimate fallout from the SolarWinds hack will be, it is clear that all organizations would benefit from re-examining their current third-party security risk strategy. I sincerely hope that it happens soon. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you found it helpful. I would love to hear your thoughts and I'll see you back here on Monday and Friday, sometime on Wednesday. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.